All good. All right, g'day Novocastrians, welcome to your jet stream for a Saturday night and a live broadcast and I'm very uh, thankful and uh, very thankful for um, Laurie McKinnon to join us to answer some of the questions that we'll put up on the Newcastle Jets supporters Facebook page. Laurie, thanks very much and how's your Saturday night going? Uh, it's, it's going all right. Um, we had to go down and to Sydney today to drop our grandkids, which was we had to do, so we're allowed on the road, but now just back had tea and... Um, just, just for the bath, bath got, got my pyjamas on, and <laughs> um, next to Lenny, my dog, with his jet, he's got, got his jet shirt on, on. so um, he, he doesn't, doesn't say much, he's quite, quite well behaved, he just sits next to me, so uh, <laughs> you know, and everything's going fine, fine. Absolutely. Um, I mean, first and foremost, I suppose it's a uh, the, the current buzzword around. I suppose is unprecedented um, with regards to the the pandemic and and sports and everything being shut down. How are you finding? your job at the moment with regards to trying to keep things ticking over until we get some sort of clarification and, and certainty on when things might return to normal? So for probably the last two weeks, we've all worked from home. You know, we've, we've, we've stood all the players and most staff down, but we've got four, four of the guys doing a few days a week, um, myself and Nicky. Basically, doing stuff every day, doing it from home, and it's yeah, away, away, but it's just not the same. You know, that that rack rack staff, and then just being able to walk in and off, 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 and it's, it's not, not like going to the office. office. Having that office, office is right, and right, having people about, you, you can't carry that the whole go, go. You just need to see most of the time. time. But the grandkids can you on and off and stuff. It's just not the same. same. So, so um, I don't think it's going to be up to the doctor. But on the other hand, you get some time to get a lot more done because you're not going to just track track to get the drive to do it five or five things. So some of those things, there's some benefits and some negatives as well. But it's just trying to keep the... Keep 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 focusing focus and, and, and getting things get finished. finished. So, um, so, um, so, it's, so it's a bit difficult, difficult but, but you know, you know um, two, two months, months ago we didn't have a lot of this position. This is something to do the best we've got, 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 and, 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 and that's, that's what we're doing. doing. Yeah, it's really hard. That it, I mean, things are things were going so well since Carl came in. Well, even even since we. Uh, uh, we had a, a temporary manager in charge, and, and things started to turn around then. But Carl's really came in and put put some confidence into the players, and things were really starting to look up before we we had to uh, to, to shut everything down. Uh, I mean, that that's got that's got to be frustrating, not just for, for for Carl, but for the players and for the club as a whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and, and uh, 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 it's just working. <laughs> At least I know it's working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Carl, 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 yeah, the, the biggest, biggest event, event team in the league, league. and um, the, the boys, boys were both apart, the boys, boys were different class, class and they could get boys, boys, boys like Akabed, just to the top, 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 you know, it was great, great, great to see West West Wilhelm, Hanlon, Clark, and, 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 um, so, so, so it was good all around. We had Lewis and Dali and Ali 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 and
the only thing I want to know is that he's obviously on the way to Wales, so the two of them went head first into the job, and very, very far out, and they were very enjoyable. 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 Have you had any discussions with Martin Lee? How's he going over in China at the moment? And what's what's is is there any danger of any issues with uh, with him being involved going forward? Obviously, China's been hit really hard with the uh, with the COVID nineteen outbreak. How how's he doing first and foremost? And and, and how's his um, how's his future um, looking as as still being the owner when everything returns hopefully to some semblance of a normalcy? This is good to okay, you know, you know, he's still, he's still he's really affected, affected the tariffs when it came, came in, 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 in the US years ago, because 50% of his business was done, was done in America. America. So that really, really, really hurt his share price, price, price. But, but, but he did launch new products, and, 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 and that's, that's got, got his sales going up, 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 when we could have got higher, higher over the last year and a half, we would have got, got more trying to get one. No, no, I could be trying to get one, but just, but just, but just if, if people, people were interested. interested. But obviously, obviously with, the, uh, with the virus, the virus second in here, here, a couple months, we'll actually do a nap down and have an episode. So Martin's always been trying to speak to me every week, sometimes two or three times a week. His business is okay, but it's very, very difficult for him to... Yeah, no worries. I'm getting some feedback coming through on the uh, on the live stream, saying there's a bit of an echo on you. Have you are you able to turn down your volume at all? I've I've turned it down from my side. I'm just hoping it's fixed up fixed up a little bit. Um, um, I'll just, I'll just... See how that goes. Yeah, is that, that better? better? We'll wait and see what um, what everybody says. I'll just see if I can adjust some more uh, um, some more um, on my side of things. I'll just drop you down a little bit in here, just to see if that makes a difference, guys. Just chuck it up in the comments section and let me know whether that's uh, whether that's made any difference to Laurie's. Uh, to Laurie's echo. Um, all right, so we'll get into a couple of questions um, while we wait for the feedback to come um, come from that. Uh, a couple of the admins from the Newcastle Jet Supporters page asked uh, how you've been coping with the crisis yourself, just personally, not necessarily if we've talked about the jet side of things. But um, and if you're a Netflix or or Stan or you've been you've been uh, into the streaming side of things, how's your uh, what's your what's your go-to movie or TV series? What have you been watching lately? Well, well since, since, since this all happened, we watched Sunderland Until I Die 2, because we watched Sunderland Until I Die 1, one. Uh, last, last year, so we watched 2, two and then we watched the English, English game, game, which was, which, which, which was decent, decent, you know, about the story of the FAA Cup and, and, and in the UK and how, how two Scottish players, players were the first professionals, tapping themselves out down in England and getting their money from them, so that was quite interesting, and then... We, we went, went to the, the Outlander, and we never, 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 never really know what you're supposed to be watching the Outlander because he's Scottish, 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 but, but me and Christy, Christy watched, watched, watched the first four series, series he's been out over the last week and a half, and we quite enjoyed it. I know we're actually saying earlier, we're going to watch tonight because we've got to the end of it, I think on Fox, it's midway through the fifth series, so we don't want to miss any, so that was it, and then... Going, going back, back right, right again, again, and somebody, somebody told me to watch what Rims 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 be. Um, the movie. Is that the one with Sasha Baron Cohen in it? Different, different, different class. class. So that, that's, that's, that's something that we want to talk about. Right, so, okay. so, so I've never, never lived in the elephant in the same, same way, 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 Another question from the Jets, Jets supporters admin, does the club or our league have any long-term steps in place to boost game attendances? I suppose leading on from that, what what's the discussions been between the league, the clubs, the PFA, the FFA, everybody? Um, what's the communication been like and is there plans in place or are we just waiting to see what sort of end date we're, we're going to be looking at before we can start planning for the future? 
Yep. All right. Is there a, is there a a commitment from the FFA slash the A League to finish the season regardless of when we come back, or is there is there actually going to be a point where we're going to have to call time on on uh, season nineteen twenty and then um, just award places as to how it finished and then go from there? There are no commitments at all at the moment. At the moment. Obviously, Obviously the one, because we've got the ASC, you know, we've got, know, we've got, got Sydney and Perth. I think that's rescheduled to start in around about August time, time, you know, for the ASC. And then, so, so it's not like, like rugby. rugby, 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 Technically, boys who are going to contract, we would need, need to recontract to come, come back and play these final games. games. So, so that, that might need to expand the season another two, two three, three, four months, months on the contract time. So, so somebody whose contract's up then, they we might need to extend to the end of September if we're going to come, come back and play those games now. So there are a few technicalities in there. Obviously, there's the TV, so there's nothing been resolved with auction, so that's up in there. So is there going to be a TV provider? You know, so there are a lot of things up in the mix yet. Even still, you know, I know this has been going on for probably six, six, seven weeks now, but there's just been so much work to do, and um, you know, in the clubs, the clubs stepping players down, and some paying the players, some's not paying the players. Some will be going on the government job worker scheme. So it's everything, and it changes every day, Grant. Every day, something. You think everything's falling into place, and then all of a sudden, somebody else chucks a hand grenade in there and it changes. So the big thing for the game is hopefully the fox situation they stay on board. Hopefully the funding comes through to the club. Hopefully the numbers keep going the way they're going and the final 27 games get planned. And then we can look at when that new season is going to start the crowd. And, and let's everybody get behind it because this is normally, normally I'd be sitting on the couch watching, or I'd be down in Sydney because I think we were playing Sydney tonight. You know, so Saturday night's not quite the same when you can't flick on the A-League or go and watch your team. So, um, the, the sooner, sooner it's back, back the better, better with crowds, because it's a bit, bit that, that Melbourne City, City game having a bit 15 people in the stadium, it's a bit eerie, especially when you, you play really well and, and you, you want that crowd behind the boys, so, so there's just so much to fall into place, yet. it's still a bit early and I'm happy in the next couple of weeks to come back on and give everybody an update, but there's so many 
balls up in the air at the moment it's too early to actually commit to what's going to happen and when it's going to happen yeah and it's probably worthwhile worthwhile pointing out that we're in the same boat as every other league across the planet um apart from belarus obviously who are still going <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and exactly, exactly right. right. And, and, look, I know the leagues come out and say they want to start the 28th, and, and I hope, hopefully, they do start the 28th because that means obviously we'll be able to start soon after that as well. But it's a big ask to come out and start saying we're going to start here and we're going to start there. So I would rather the A League got all the ducks in a row, all the medical, medical advice, and, and came through and did the right thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Matt McGurr asked, uh, are you worried that we're going to lose any staff, uh, coaches, players, etc., cetera, and, uh, due to the virus? And do you think that the club's going to come out of this okay? Well, well hopefully they know they're going to die with the virus. So we've had our one player got the, the virus and he's, he's, he's brand, brand new again, again and, and fully fit. fit. The, no, there, there, are, there are possibilities. I don't think we'll, the, staff, the staff are all locked in for the next three years. So, so um, and Carl, I'm on the phone with him every couple of days. He's back in Canada. Canada. His, his, his daughter, he was moving house because he was coming back here with his family. His family were here, so he's in the back. Kenny Miller's back. Because he, his wife had actually put, put, sold the house when he was here. So they're going through all that at the moment. So the coaching staff are locked in and, and desperate to come back up. They've enjoyed... They've enjoyed, they enjoyed their time, time in um, Newcastle, Newcastle big, big time, and, and I heard an interview Joe Ledley did, did. I shared it on Facebook tonight. Yep. And that first six, he spoke very highly. Like, like, I took him to the airport the day after the Melbourne City game, game. and he hadn't had had watched a lot of the A League, but he said, Look, I was really impressed the stand up. I never gave it that much credit. And he said, To be fair, some of the players, but he knew the boys hurt him, they are decent players, you know, so he gave us a good rap. Which, which is good because when, when you're sitting in the UK at half seven, seven in the morning watching the game where, where grandstand, grandstand is half empty because it's 40 degrees, degrees and the sun's beating down in that grandstand stand. You know, you know it's, it's not, not the most attractive, attractive game, game. Mm-hmm. But, but when you're actually here and you see it, you see it in the part of it, it he, was, he, he was a great advert for the A-League and Newcastle was back, back in the UK. I suppose just a question I had, what uh, with those players, that, well, especially our import players, it, there's no necess- there's, it doesn't look like there's any real guarantee that we're going to have the borders open at any point in the next 12 months by the sounds of it. They, they're talking don't plan on going on a holiday or overseas for anything until at least 2021. What's that going to do for, for the import players that we do have that are, that are currently overseas where it, it's Ooh. just going to come to a point where we're, we're not going to be able to count on them being back? Yeah, 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 if, if the borders, borders are closed, closed, they're going to be closed. closed. We, we had to get, get um, Bobby. Bobby. Bobby's, Bobby's father had come out on holiday and his mum couldn't come, come because she's got respiratory problems, problems and heart problems. problems. So, so we, we just thought, thought get, get Bobby, Bobby back, back straight away. Um, Joe's, Joe's, Joe's family, his wife and three kids were ready to fly out the next week. After then, because the games get cancelled, you know, that changed everything. So, so we had, had to get him back. back. Wes, Wes, Wes is still here, here. But, but now he's, he's, he's starting to look at lights when they can get back out. out. But, but because, because of the situation in, in the UK, UK it's, it's a lot worse than here. So, so uh, Wes might end up staying here for a long time. And, and, and the Royal, the Royal's here at the moment. But I feel really sorry for the Royal because his English isn't the best. And when, 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 when you've got training to go to every day, you know, that's the best part of your, your job. job. You're at you're training, training, you're interacting with people. people. At, at the moment, he's stuck in a, a wee flat, flat, a wee apartment, apartment. Um, and, and he's, he's, you know, he's, he's on his own, own but, but the, the borders of Panama are locked down. We actually can't get him back to Panama. So if we have to start the the, 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 the last, last four games, games without the, the, the visa players, so be it, yeah, you know, we, 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 but Joe Edley played a little part, part in the games, games. Wes only played, played the last probably three or four games, games. Arroyo was, was in and out, yeah, yeah, he played most, most of the games, games. but you know, we would get by, like Carol's, we just have to, it's a bit of duty of care, you can't have boys stuck here and not getting back when they've got family and that's stuck over in the UK, so so it could be a problem. But, but it's going, going to be a problem for all the teams because most of the teams now are sending the boys back if they, if they can, can get, get out. out. Um, and a player that's, uh, well, player in inverted commas, that's overseas and we, we don't know what's happening. What, what's the update on Joey Champness? Is he still over in the US or is he was he able to make it back to Australia? 
Well, the last message I got to him, um, and when I got that message on Facebook the other day and I answered it, I actually had a giggle because it actually forgot about Joe. For, for, and, and that's not I've been disrespectful, it's just, just been all season I was on the phone trying, trying to get him back. back. And, and then, then we, we, we brought in Bernie, we brought in Joe, we, we brought in Roy, we went, you know what, we're all right now. now. Mm. We, we don't need Joe so much. So much. Um, and but the, last, the last the last I heard from him, he was still in LA, he was getting close. He had another, he was cutting another record. and So I think he's still living the dream, but I don't know how well his dream's doing. I will need to give him a buzz to see where he's at, because I actually don't know where he is. Yeah, and if there's one place in the world you don't want to be at the moment, it's probably the US, uh, especially with everything going on over there. You'd, you'd want to get him back home. Yeah, yeah you look at, you look at um, New York and you look at London and the amount of deaths, you know, you know I, I, I hope, I hope people realise how lucky they are being in Australia. Australia. Yeah, um, we, we might, might be a, a long, long way away, away but I think, I think there's so, so many, many benefits to being here, here, here at the moment, moment especially with the pandemic, pandemic going, on. going on. Yep, absolutely. Um, and Matt Barbara asked, uh, uh, how do you feel the A-League, W-League and Jets will be going forward from COVID-19? We sort of already answered that in the most part. Um, with regards to the W-League, I suppose, um, and the... English W League that started up um, fairly recently that's running around the same time. How's that going to impact us being able to get players of a of a good quality to be able to come over and 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 not just play for the Jets but play in the A League in general? Obviously, we've seen quite a few of our higher quality Matildas go over and playing with the likes of Everton and Chelsea and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. What's what's the future of the W League going forward? Because there has been media reports that maybe that might be a casualty of the uh, the, the current pandemic? I think because the Matildas are one of the best teams in the world. And, and some of these big leagues now overseas, that they're, they're chucking a lot of money in, so they're going to come and get the best players. So last year we chose, due to budgetary restraints, not to go for any overseas players. And we finished bottom, and we're back, and we're in the area, you we had a goal. But, but I think, think more and more girls, girls will stay overseas because, because the, the money they'll get, get is the, the girls, the girls, the girls season, season over here is like 14, 14, 14 weeks, weeks plus three seasons, 20, 20 week contract. contract. They've only got shots short and lifespan as players because girls, girls usually retire before the boys retire as well. I think we're in a big a, a big, big um, dilemma, dilemma at the moment that I don't I think, think the top end Aussie girls will stay in Australia. I think a lot of them will go overseas to, to, to secure secure the future, I suppose. So I think the timing before it is just basically the American League and our league, it worked really well. Um, you know, really really girls going to China because I know the money they were off of. Just, just, I'd just be advised to go to Wuhan, but stay away from Wuhan. But the some, Some of the money, money they're going to get, the girls are getting, and, and, and the recognition is yet, I think more and more of the Matilda girls will. Um, it's, it's probably just as well the Olympics was not on this year, because as soon as after the Olympics, half the girls will be taken overseas, because they'll go there and do well, and they'll get picked up by big clubs. I suppose on the positive side of things, it does provide an opportunity for players that are currently local based that wouldn't get that opportunity. So there's a lot of the girls last year. So a lot of those younger girls, they'll, 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 they've had a year, a year under the belt now in the W League, they're going to be better players for us. So, so there are a lot of upsides as well as downsides, but you know, when, especially when we play number two, you know, the, the big thing I would like to see more of is more games at number two. And, and less, less double headers at the stadium, stadium because, because the, the crowd that turned up at number two turned, turned up to watch the girls. girls. Yeah. We're, We're getting about 1,500, 1,600. I think, I think we can build on that and get even more. And it's a great atmosphere. atmosphere. Rather than getting the three to three and a half thousand that come in by the 80 minutes of the game, and that's what the crowd is counted at at McDonald Jones. You know, the, the, the crowd come to watch the girls, and it's a different crowd. It's a real family atmosphere. And, and the girls really enjoy, enjoy that. that. It, it gives them their own identity, identity which, which I think is important. important. They're not just a tag on. And we've, we've always treated the girls equally to the boys. And, 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 and I think, think the, the girls, girls play more games, games at number two standalone. And um, it's good for them. Well, Andy just chucked me a supplementary question while he was listening, um, asking, will there be money in the W League if at all with these global economies being hit so hard? 
I suppose maybe to expand on that, what what's what in your eyes do you think is going to be the picture for football globally with all the all the issues we're having around the pandemic? Obviously, we've seen um, you know uh, cuts and layoffs and all sorts of stuff just from Fox Sports and um, overseas. There's there's leagues shut down and and possibility of having to pay money back if the if games don't go ahead. Is there yeah, going to be yeah. a sort of a reset with the finances of global football? Do you think with 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 um with things going forward, or do you think it, it's probably going to be a period of adjustment and then things will go back? No, to no, no, I think there'll be a reset, reset. and I think, I think in China, China, in China, China, China last, last season, season well, well, this, this season, season, then the last season, season there was definitely a reset. They were the biggest spending league in the world, and they definitely have cut back. A lot, a lot of their teams, teams went bankrupt, bankrupt and, and they got, got shut down because um, they were just spending the money they never had. I, I think there'll definitely have to be a reset. Obviously, obviously the money in Australia is not near the money overseas, overseas but I think, I think there'll even be a reset, reset here. here. Yeah. And, 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 and that, that will, will all depend what happens with Fox and the TV deal and if we've got a TV deal. So, again, that's putting all those balls in the air again. I think there'll be a reset. Uh, and, and I think, think it might not be a bad, bad thing, thing in some, some ways, ways that, that you get, get back, back to back basics. basics and um, you, you go back, back you, you were about 15, 15 years ago when the A-League started, 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 you know, we had half a dozen staff that were lucky running a football team, probably five staff in the football department, you had players who just became full-time for the first time in their careers, and you know, everybody had a go, and, and you look at some of those early years with the crowds and, and, and the games, and you go, you know what, the, the standard of football was decent, but it was decent because everybody mucked in and had a go, and, and I think that it's going to come back to a wee bit of that, we're going to all just have to roll up sleeves and, and make the best of what we can with what we've got, because I just think things will definitely be financially a bit tight all around about the world. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, go through a couple more questions. Uh, Damien McFarlane asked uh, how the players are getting through the uh, through the outbreak. Are you in contact with the guys um, fairly regularly? Right, right. And, and we've mentioned well, a couple of the overseas well, players. Well, so the, the, the fitness, the fitness team and physios are there in contact. So they're doing updates and doing, they're doing Zoom, Zoom uh, yoga sessions with uh, Tomo, not Tomo, um, what do you call him? Ex player. Oh, uh, I can see him. That, that will come to him in a minute. But they're doing, they're doing the yoga. Scotty Thomas. Scotty Thomas is doing the yoga sessions with the boys. So I spoke to Mossy yesterday. Mossy is painting his house. So he's doing his training program. But he saved himself some money because he's decided he's painting the house. house. Yeah. Um, um, but, but I speak to Bogues way in the updates, so we can then Bogues, Bogues lets the players know. know. Um, before, before, when, when we, we said we're still just standing everybody down, down, I spoke to every player and every staff member. Before, before when, when we had a couple, couple of staff meetings and football meetings, and then, then I spoke to everyone individually. But I'll go through Bogues to let Bogues tell all the players what's going on. So as soon as we get news of anything that can affect what's going on, we. I touch, I touch base for them. them. I'll, I'll be in the office on Monday, and, and the, the guys, guys who are doing some work there will come in an hour at a time and just have a catch up face to face. But there'll only be two of us in there, just by myself and one of them at a time. Because we'll do the make sure we've got the social distancing happening. And, you know, the boys spoke to Roy the other day, I've spoke to Matty Miller, you know, just boys are phoning up asking questions. and and uh, the yeah, boys have all been pretty up to, to be honest, you know, we've got a good, a good when, when I was driving to the airport, 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 another thing he said to me was, was I said, how's the dressing room, Joe, you've been in a lot of big dressing rooms, he said, Larry, this is the best dressing room I've ever been in my career, he says, I've never been in a dressing room like this before, where the boys are so helpful, got on so well, and the, the, the band, band, there were no badness, backstabbing, bitchiness. He said, this is different class, which, which is just really, really encouraging that a boy, a boy, a boy who's had a fantastic career overseas, um, scored in Champions Leagues and, and played, played for his national team at the same time. You know, that, it's nice, it's nice feedback. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, just a side question that um, Matt Hutchinson popped up in the uh, in one of the chats. Did uh, did Inspiration Paint help out with uh, with Mossy's house, and is he painting it uh, red, blue, and gold? 
Well, well I, don't I don't actually, actually I never asked, asked them that, that. but when, when I, I was down in Sydney, Sydney today, and when I dropped off the grandkids at Summer Hill, and just as you're talking about Joe Goodsir, our good sponsors, as we was driving through Five Dock, um, as I was driving through Five Dock, I just went past the Inspirations Paint Shop. So I had to send that straight through to your sponsors because um, they're, they're very good. So um, I don't know, but I do know in the past that Joe Goodsir and Inspirations Paint have assisted the boys in getting a good deal on the paint. So I wouldn't be Has been on the phone because I knew the boys. The boys we've got a great relationship with for these jobs. Yep, definitely. And he's also helped out um, some other people as well. Um, all right, uh, Jason Scully asked, "Have you ever watched the uh, 2008 Grand Final back and enjoyed it as a Jet rather than the losing coach?" No, and I remember. And I've never been asked that question all my time in Newcastle since coming up. You know, we got there always a lot of banter, and I'll take the piss and have a laugh about it. But I've, I've never, never actually, actually watched, watched the game. game. I've, I've never, never watched, watched the first grand final in 2005. And, and I've never, never watched, watched the, the, the Jets and one either. either. I've, I've saw bits and pieces and I just, just watched watch it all off. I've, I've saw highlights. I've, I've saw Joe Griffiths scoring the winner. Yep. Yes. Definitely Bridget. No. But no, I've never watched it. And it's not because I don't want to watch it. It makes me angry or sad. I've just never had any inkling to actually watch the game. As, as what, what I can, I can remember, remember of the game, game and obviously we could beat, but it wasn't, wasn't the best baseball game, it was a real kind of stalemate. Yeah. And, um, you know, but, but getting 40 odd thousand people in the stadium between the Jets and the Marlins was a, was a huge out, huge, 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 huge uh, congratulations to both sets of supporters and teams, but I've never really even thought about going back and watching That's fair enough. Uh, Lee Proctor asked about the player who tested positive. We've answered that. Thank you. Um, can we get the premiership winning side to attend my next birthday party? I can probably answer that saying no. Uh, Mitchell Field, what's been the main reason in your eyes for the supporter drop-off throughout the years? Um, what would you suggest the club does or even the whole league does better to bring in more fans of support and more fans and supporters? I suppose leading on that sort of leads on from your previous answer. With regards to tightening the belt, it's 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 going to have to be a, a marketing campaign to get people to come out and support the league through the tough times and and get people to to come out and buy memberships and and support the um and support the league and the team. You know, we so we and the memberships we we are over ten thousand this season. So last season we were. So the year after the grand final, we got eleven a record eleven thousand six hundred. Um, this, this year will be 10, 4, 10, 5. The, I think we set a bit fourth behind Melbourne, Melbourne set, Melbourne victory, Wanderers, then Sydney, then about us. So we do a right to get to a population base, but how do you get more people? So somebody asked, I think, online, I don't know if it was on that, what's the best ever promo we've done, and probably. Maybe, Maybe year, year two, two since I was there, the year we got to grand final, the first game of the season. Against Perth, we done a promo where people had to pay the ticket. They had to pay the ticket at cost. So if you bought four tickets, it was still like four dollars fifty ticket charge. But the tickets weren't free, so you had to actually pay something. And we gave a special number out, and people could go and get four tickets, six tickets. We actually, we actually issued, issued 6,000 6, tickets for that and 5,000 5, turned up at the game. game. Mm. So, so it wasn't, because I know people keep going on about free tickets. tickets. Free tickets. When, when I used, used to go and watch Glasgow Rangers every week, I never ever looked for a free ticket. I might have jumped to drum styles a couple of times when it was athletic. But you just go and go to your game and support your team. You, you tend, tend to find, find because we give, give so just say we give out a thousand comps every game to sponsors. So through, through the sponsors, packing these, some will get 10, 10, some will get 20. 20. So, so just say it's a thousand. thousand. Only 500 of them will turn up. So everybody goes on to give kids free tickets. When I was at Marmars, 
We had energy, energy at Osgrid sponsor season tickets for every junior, junior football player. So 8,000 players on the centre coast got a free season ticket. What, what, what would you reckon, reckon how many of that 8,000 went to every game? So went to 12 games. games. Just, just give me a guess. Just, right. just, just a uh, ball 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 probably ball. less than half. 28 people went to every game. Wow. And they were going to be tickets. Oh, I was right. So, it was less than half. <laughs> yeah, yeah, less than half. So you know what I mean? So it's not... It doesn't work necessarily. It doesn't necessarily work. And it's getting that... Um, I said, I'll, I'll, I'll get people coming up to me, and this has been over the years, not just in Newcastle. Oh, when's the, when's the, I'm a Jets fan, when's, when's the season start? It starts start start three months ago. ago. You know, so, so some of it has to go back to support and support your team. You know, and I'm not, I'm not saying it's all supports, but yeah, we need to get, okay, we've done the big survey with Newcastle Uni, with Dortmund, Russia Dortmund and us, and we've done the W League one. One, One of the, the biggest, biggest reasons, so we see say we've got 10,000 fans, 10,000 10, members, members, I'm just, just chucking that number in. Most of the average is that the full member, member would come, come maybe a bit, seven, eight, eight, nine games. games. So, so then, then the questions, questions the, the biggest, biggest thing, thing, why do you not come to, to um, why do you not come to every game? Uh, kick off things. things. So, so that's, that's a big, a big thing. thing. Yeah. Then, then family, then, then family things, things because again that comes into clashes with like uh, because we had a couple of Sunday, Sunday, Sunday games at seven o'clock kickoff. Kick well, kick nobody's going to take the kids to seven o'clock kickoff on Sunday. You're not going to take the kids on a Friday night to a ten to eight kickoff. You know, so those kickoff times, the heat. So there are a lot of reasons, but but. Again, Again, going, going back, back to when I was a supporter of Scotland, Scotland, I didn't, I didn't care to rain, rain, cause cause it rained because every day it rained in Scotland, so you just went to the football because you were going to the football. Yeah. And, and it's getting that passion, and getting that pride. And look, I think since I've been a club, nobody can say we're not a community club now. You know, we do more community events than any other club in the league by a long shot. So there's only so much we can do. And I'm. I'm, I'm not passing, passing the buck on, on to anybody. Yeah, yeah we need, need to do better, 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 better advertising, advertising, get more exposure, let people know the games are on. But people need, need, to, need to, when, when it's, when it's two, two hours before kickoff, kick kick and you look out the window and you get a drip of rain, I know straight away, and I could pick it as a central coast in the if it rained an hour and a half, Two, two hours to an hour and a half outside the, uh, away for kickoff, that was you, you're three, four thousand people less because, because, because people, people wouldn't need to watch it or watch it at home. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, it can, so, can that so, something be adjusted with regards to the broadcasters? Uh, I know they do blackouts over in the UK with um, games in the local area. They won't televise them live so that that sort of thing doesn't happen. Do you, do you, would that sort of system work here if, if it, it's probably a little bit more difficult to do that locally, but. Um, maybe have the games on delay in a state, um, uh, in the state that they're being played um, and live in the other <laughs> states? In the current broadcast, they will know. And, and definitely, definitely not definitely in the current broadcast. So, broadcast so if that, if who knows if that's going to change or not, but if that changes down the track, down the track you, know, you know, that, you that know, could that happen. Could happen. Um, um, we, we are very fortunate that all games are live on TV. On one hand, but... But, but again, again, we've, but again, we've, we've got, got the support base, base we've got the people, people who, who like, we, we had um, 30,000 30, people turn up to the grand final two, two years ago, 26,000 of them were Jets fans, fans. Jets fans. they, they bought the tickets in a day and a half, and a half. Um, so, so the fans there, there it's just re-engaging them again, how do we re-engage them, and it's not easy, and we'll try, and we'll listen to anybody, and I think it's... I was, I was talking, talking about it, there was somebody who in there about why not make it three for the first game of the crowd. I would love to do that. Work in the stadium, fill the place, and that's what we did against Perth when we done that promo, we got 5,000 extra people coming. And during the season, probably 2,000 of them joined up as members because we got them, engaged them, they enjoyed the game. And then it might be our first league game, and maybe we'll give away a car or something, maybe we'll do a big draw card, free entry, who knows? Who knows? But um, it was a great suggestion. Great Open the gates. We've spoke about it. Let's get as many people as possible in there. But 
and let's, let's give, give a big carrot for the dangle to get them in there, there as well, well yeah, which is going to be good for a sponsor and it's going to be good for the crowd that somebody's going to win something substantial just before kick-off or a half-time or something. And hopefully you see a good game of football, and I think over the last year and a half, but we, we weren't playing, playing that well, regardless, regardless of what you heard on the media or what Ernie would say, it wasn't that entertaining to watch. And I think that's another thing. People, you tell me, Grant, you've been there for day one. Newcastle fans want to see the boys roll up the sleeve and have a go. Yeah, play some good football, but put in a bit of effort and a bit of pride in that jersey, and that makes a huge difference. Yeah, absolutely. That's been the... Um, through through multiple CEOs and 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 managers that they've asked for feedback, that's been the one thing that we've we've told them. It's it, you know the, the, we don't expect to win Premier League, uh, win the league every season. We don't expect to be finishing at the top of the table. That'd be nice, but we just want the team to look like they want to play for the people that you know that yeah. turn up every yeah. week. That's that's yeah. the number one yeah. thing that Nova Cash friends want. Yeah, 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 and it's so not, and, and I think, and I think those, those last few games, games Deansy came in and it changed, and then Carl came in and they went to a different level, 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 and, level, and, level, and, and, and you could feel that for the crowd, crowd. you know, you could feel it in the game, you know, you could feel that enthusiasm, and and they're proud, you know, the big thing I noticed when I first came out in Newcastle is once we started getting on that role in the second year, people were proud of the town. You know, they're walking about their caps on, their shirts on, and they're walking about and they're walking tall because they were proud of what the team and it's not necessarily winning every week as you say, but they were proud that they were having a goal and they were making a statement that they were proud to play for Newcastle. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Andy Wright just popped up a question in the comments section which sort of follows on from the broadcast side of things. We were talking about um, more free-to-wear football. How important do you think a free-to-wear component is or isn't to the league? Do you, do you see it as important or to, to increase the visibility and maybe to appeal that people that are not necessarily rusted on football supporters or do you don't think that free-to-wear makes that much of a difference? No, no, I think no, sponsors, when you put the full package in, sponsorship, um, exposure for sponsors, exposure to the game, obviously if you're away from home, how good it is that you've got, the home fans can watch it. Um, I think it's a big part of the big picture when you're trying to get a major sponsor, so they're going to want exposure from the live, the live coverage, and that's where if you can get it on free to air, but... I think, I think the model is more going towards streaming like Keo and stuff like that, and, and I'm sure down the track that's what will happen because people are watching games different now. You know, it's you know maybe maybe I'm one of the old fashioned. I'll watch the five A league. We're away from home if we can. I'll watch the game on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'll watch every game, but. But I think, I think the average, average is about one and a half, half games per weekend now that the, the fans, fans are watching, so they watch their team and watch, watch others. So the way we get the, the get metrics on who watches the game is it's showing that people are watching the game differently now. Because a lot of people are clicking on and off on the phones. It's going definitely way if you're sitting down in front of the TV and watching the full game. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see what happens with five But I think the answer to that question, good question, it's the full package to get the big money off the sponsors they need to have the games live in tv and have eyeballs watching the games yep fair enough all right so aiden wilkinson asked a question about the w league we've pretty much answered already uh ryan hitchcock where do you see the club heading in terms of winning more games and hopefully the league one day we sort of answered that in a roundabout way, but is there any more you want to expand on that with Carl's yeah, plans but, for the future? Yeah, obviously, we've been signed Carl up for three and a half years, three and a bit years. years, 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 years. years. He'd, He'd had, had success, success in the MLS, MLS and, and just, just what he wanted to bring, bring to the club and the passion. Because he proved you come in and you work with the players, you can improve them. And that's his big thing. He says to the players the first day, I'll, I'll, I'll push you as hard as you've ever been pushed, but you'll love it, but you'll and you'll get better. And, you'll get and I think he's proven that he can do that. Can do that. Um, um, I, I can see over I can see over this, this the reset. reset, reset well, forget, yeah, about forget about finishing, finishing this season. This season, the, the reset, reset for the new reset, season, whenever that happens. That happens. Who knows, who knows, we could lose, lose players, players, other teams could lose players, players. So, it's, so it's like, like we, we were building a squad for next year, we'd identified players, we'd spoke to players, now that's all up in the air at the moment. Um, 
Um, but we, but we, we felt as though well with the squad we had, when Carroll came over weeks before he got the job to have a look, he said, we're not that far off that. I said, I know we're not. He says, it's very close. He came down to Melbourne City. We went and watched the Mariners and West United game. And he'd watched all the other games. He said, we're not far away. Um, um, so, so I think, so I think, I think with, with the good coach, good, good staff there, good staff there and, and getting our main game players, because we're never going to be able to compete with the big boys. It really does my head in when people say, get Matt Lee to open up his first strength. Well, he's only spent 15 million so far on the club. You know, so why can we maybe not try and break even? And that's breaking even on, yeah, paying the minimum. This year we paid on the salary cap. But, but you, you look, look at, at the last eight games, games our improvement, we'd have been six yeah, seconds in the league, and that was spending 3.2 million. million. Mm. So, so, so when, when I, I won the league, the, league, the minor premiership and made the two grand finals, we were spending 85% of the salary cap as a And I'm sure when the Jets, that year, the Jets, they would have been that much more than us. So you can do it, but then you need you need to have your main players on the park, like the Wes Hulahan. You know, Wes Hulahan came horrific injury, five months, droughts, fires, floods, and then the coronavirus. You know, the, the wee man had a shocker since he came to Australia. But he absolutely loved that. Um, um, so, so when you've got, got a, a smaller, smaller squad, squad, you have to have your best players on the park to, 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 um, to, um, to, to have, have that success. success but success, but <laughs> there would be nothing, nothing better, better than, than getting get to another grand final and actually, actually winning it. And, and, um, and, and, um, and, and then, and then the, the next year, year the big thing is is to back it up the next year. That was my disappointing thing. We did so well that year, two years ago, then the next year we finished seventh or eighth. And, and it, it just, just wasn't, wasn't, the same. wasn't the same. You know, we, the, the fight, fight, the desire. The desire the, yeah, yeah, and, and, and we didn't hear, we lost in the room, we lost here, yeah, we lost players, we lost players, players, other players, players, you know, players, other players have to other step players up. Have to step up. Yeah. You know, I'm, you know, you yeah, know, yeah, we do lose players, but that gives somebody else an opportunity. I mean, the same well. thing. The same thing well. happened with um, grand final winning teams all across the A League in its history. I mean, we went from winning the grand final in two thousand and eight to the wooden spoon the following year, and I'm pretty sure Melbourne victory. Um, Sydney FC have struggled. I think it's only recently they've been able to put a consistent run together. So it's not just a it's not just a Newcastle thing. It's you know once well, once you win, right, the players right, yeah. are players are after more money. Um, other clubs want those players as well. It's it's just it just makes it very difficult. Yeah, it's, yeah, and it, it's and, it, and it, when, when new teams, teams come in, it drives, drives the market. The market. You know, so, so a, a player, a player that they would normally say get hundred grand, grand, that player will pick up hundred and thirty, hundred and forty grand, grand because there's no competition for players. Um, players. So, so it pushes, pushes the market, market value up. It doesn't mean the players any better, but you have to pay them more to secure them. Jack Gardner asked a question about signing Santiago Munez from Newcastle United. I don't know if it's going to be much of a much of a chance with the uh, rumoured Saudi takeover of uh, of the turn over in the UK, but uh, heard of him? What's he like? <laughs> he's decent. As any player with him, I, mean, I did see about the takeover. Is it six hundred million pounds or something? Six hundred and something million quid. Yeah. yeah. Basically, there's no chance. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen. It might, it might come out in holiday or something. It might come in holiday once international barriers get there. But we, we could say we did try to get him, but because we couldn't get him on a flight because the orders were locked, we missed out on him. Um, Jace Muller asked a question about uh, marquee players. Why have all the A-League clubs stopped having true marquee players that bring fans through the gate? Um, I, I think there's still maybe one or two um, clubs that actually do use marquee players, but not necessarily the way it was originally envisaged when the A-League first started. But what, what's been the, what do you think has been the, uh, the reasoning behind the, the shift in focus with regards to marquee players? So, so obviously, obviously Dwight, Dwight York was a marquee, and he, he got people, got people through, through the gates. Through the gates. Um, at the beginning, and uh, Del, Del Piero, I think he he brought people he through, the through the gates. Through the gates. Um, Heskey in Newcastle. 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 But, but then you, but then you, you yeah, actually, so, so the Honda so down at Melbourne Victory. So that was three point three point three million he got, one point five for the marquee fund and one point five for Melbourne Victory. Scored a few goals, was injured, yeah, but did he 
you saw a couple of Japanese flags in the crowd and stuff like that, but he put thousands of people on the seat. I don't think he did. Um, it's bringing, it's bringing, it's bringing a name, a name, who's um. A name, a name that's a going, name to is going to put bombs on seats in Australia. Who, and it's, and it's, so you come up with one who that everybody's going to recognise. He's still playing at a reasonable level. level. It's, it's, it's going to cost, cost like, like it's, it's going to cost, cost more than the full operating budget of the club to get those people. Last two years ago, FFA did look at the marquee list they sent to Abraham Ibrahimovic. You know, you know, he, he was, was, was something, something like five million dollars or something. Dollars you know, the, you know, the, the fees, fees were just, fees were just totally, totally above what the A-League clubs, clubs could afford yeah. to bring, bring these, these guys out. It's guys purely down, down, to down, to down to that. Any player, your highest paid player can be a marquee, so there no, so there no, there no, um, there are no restrictions on it. So you can basically put your highest paid player as your marquee player. But when Vargas, when Vargas was here, Vargas was a marquee player because he was a so when we spent we spent for those two years we made the grand final and the year after when we finished eight we spent four million dollars on players on players so we spent eight hundred thousand over the salary cap we made the grand final the second year we finished eight and we spent the same money if it doesn't guarantee it doesn't guarantee yeah okay um, Aidan Wilkinson, my question is: If the A League doesn't go back this season, or if uh, we don't finish the season, would you have a would you have an issue? Per- I'm, I'm assuming he's just asking personally with giving Sydney the minor premiership, but not the not the championship, since there was no grand final series. I think because, because the Jets won, won the last professional game, game in Australia in the A League, we deserve to be crowned champions because champion we beat Melbourne six. I agree Melbourne totally. Uh, last, last team standing. Last team standing. Um, um, because, 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 um, because um, if I say, I say Sydney, Sydney should win the league, win the league that, that means Celtic, Celtic should win the league in Scotland, and I'm a Rangers supporter, and that would give Celtic nine in a row. So I have to say, nah, Sydney shouldn't get the league because Celtic shouldn't get in Scotland. But, 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 but Sydney do deserve it. Yeah, absolutely. Sydney do deserve it. They've been, been the best, the most, most consistent team over the last two or three years. years. They, they keep the same players on the park. The, the, the kids they, they, they bring through. through. They've, they've done. They've done. Arley done, done, done a great Arley job. Done, Andrew Clark was with them and Crawley, who were with me the Manners. And then Steve Corrick has came in and just stepped up and just continues. A lot of people thought we Corrick could come in and be able to maintain it, and he's just come in the same same. You know, it's been they've been very very impressive. Very impressive. All right, Dave Lusa asked uh, about the economy and Martin Lee's involvement. We've answered that one. Uh, David Werner, would the club look to revisit a partnership with another larger overseas club? Um, for instance, how there was one point talks to form a sister club relationship with the Jets and Newcastle over in the Premier League. Um, I know that there was um, some talk of, uh, I think, when we had that discussion at the beginning of the season, forging some closer links with Dortmund. Um, yep. Yep. What's what's the current um, relationship there, and are there any are there any discussions with maybe involving some other clubs to perform like a loose network? So through, um, through um, these, these things, things get flagged things about, but usually all as is a junket for somebody for there to come out to Australia, Australia and, and you, you never really get anything out of it. You, you, know, know, you know, when, when, when I was, I was at Manners, we had it with Sheffield United, 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 you know, and, you know, and yeah, yeah, when, when I went back, back to Scotland to, Scotland to see my family, I'd go down to Sheffield, and came all the way down and go and see them for a couple of days, and that was basically that. It has to work that actually we're going to get some players, so Carol Robinson's agent, he can open the doors and get us in at Arsenal, Crystal Palace, a lot of these a lot of these clubs. So hopefully with that relationship with Calum's agent that we might be able to pick up pick up Premier League clubs players who are just on the fringe of that first team and give them experience. Whereas financially it's not really hot us either, but it's given us exposure to players who are going to come here as 22-year-old, 23-year-old. Um, like a Bobby Burns, Bobby was 19, 20. And when he came in, Bobby became a fan's favourite, you know, once he eventually got a gig 
left fullback is, um, is um, obviously the left foot, unlike other people who were playing there before. But Bobby came in and did very well. I'm, I'm talking about boys at a better level than Bobby. But Bobby's came in here um, from halves on loan. And he's done a great job, and, and Bobby, Bobby's, the cost of Bobby was, was very, very affordable for us. It was a great deal for us, and it was a good deal for Bobby. Yeah. And Bobby came in and done a good job, a great left foot, and a very infectious person about the town, done a lot of charity work around McDonald House, and he was out and about, and he talked he talk the case off any clock. Um, but bringing in people like that who... Are going to play. They're not used to bringing in, like the man I was bringing in the two boys to Sheffield United, 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 I think last season, 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 season before, and, before and, you, you know, know the, they, they couldn't really hold, a, hold, a, hold a spot, spot down the team that finished bottom of the league, you know, you need people to come in who's going to step up for the right reasons. Now Bobby Burns, if Hearts get relegated, it's probably good for him because they'll offload the higher paid players and Bobby. Bobby could potentially be a starter or a half. Um, um, but even depending, depending who, I think the assistant coach the is one of the Northern Ireland, Ireland coaches. coaches. So there's a so chance that Bobby's chance came out here, played, played 10, 12, 10, 12 really good games, games and he's set himself up to break into the half first. And that's that's where that system relationship should be for, where the players are going to come here and get the benefit and where our better players so, so if you say, say like a demi or something like that, we can then, then okay, 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 let's, let's offload them there, there and, and then, then hopefully then that, that club will that club sell them, them same as what, what um, Melbourne, Melbourne City done, done with Moy, you know, they've done, done that deal with Man City got and then the owner of the Huddersfield then sold them for like 10 million euros. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, uh, do, 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 do. Ben uh, B. Archer, uh, we'd love to continue supporting the club by buying merchandise. Is there any chance for an increase in merch offerings to include things such as ties, stationery, posters, you know, all those little little things that it, you it, see with... It, that, that, that comes down to um, um, suppliers. suppliers. So, so it depends. depends. So, so a lot of that stuff, lot of that stuff you either don't do that stuff. And that's just all the knickknacks. And... So, so that's, that's all licensed, licensed out. Licensed well, the, 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 li- the, the, the new something's, something's happening in the off season just now with the licensee. Who was the, the, the person who got all, all that in and, and then put all, all that together? together. At the so shop this year, we went, we done the merchandise itself. It was the first year. We didn't do it great and it was work in progress, but we'll definitely try to get more of a range. Definitely. But it depends on the licensees. They have to pay an upfront cost to FF. FFA, FFA to, 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 manage, to, manage, to make a league stuff. You, yep. you just can't stick, stick a logo on an A-League shop. shop. Yep. Uh, Cecil A. Smith asks, what's your favourite ice cream? I told them chocolate. 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 Yeah, I remember <laughs> answering that. But I'm not really a big ice cream guy. You know, I'm more of yogurt now. As I get more mature and sensible, it's more a bit of fruit and yogurt. Um, so I'm more of a yogurt guy now at night. But I don't mind the Magnum, to be honest. I don't mind the Magnum. That chocolate Magnum. No, I like the white Magnum. I'm a... Yeah, yeah, well, my wife, Christy, eats the white, the white magnum. magnum. I eat the dark one, and I eat all the chocolate all first before eating the magnum. <laughs> uh, Harry first. Laurie, well done on getting fit over the past year. What's your lockdown regimen, I'm assuming? What's your what's your fitness regime while you're, while you're in isolation? Or, well, well lockdown. Yeah. So, no, so, so, no, so over, the last, over the last probably two years, I've lost about 32 kilos, so... so. Once, Once my foot got better for the operation, the operation I had, when I was going, going about my wee scooter. Now, I started, 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 started walking, walking and, and just doing, doing some basic exercises, exercises, exercises and trying to do it every, at least five, five times, times a week. Times yeah. a week. Um, um, and, and then, then, then just, just before the virus kicked in, I'd because, because I started that, even jogging, a little bit of jogging as well, doing push ups, and then a walk. I started going to the gym at the forum, the forum at, at the uni at before, the so instead of walking, I would go to the gym early and I'd do that probably five times a week. Since the lockdown, I've been walking in the morning and then walking at night as well, and I've actually done too much, so one of my knees have stuffed up, so I'm hobbling about again, so you just start getting feeling really good, and 
um, he sometimes just pushed the body too hard, and it wasn't as, as though I was doing something I shouldn't be doing. It was just, just something wrong with my knee, and it's kind of seized up, so I'm not quite as mobile as I was, but it's just a lot of walking, exercise, and just watching my eat, and not, not being stupid, stressed, but just watching, not overindulging. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, quite a few people are going to be in the same boat with uh, very little to do. You can't go out and can't go out and do much do much so the the temptation is to sit at home and overindulge so yeah keep an eye on your keep an eye on your calorie intake uh aiden wilkinson asked who's going to coach the w league next season no no no, no sure. sure so, so dins has done, done, done it for five years he's done a good job it's just time to step, step down um, um we have we have we've spoke to ash we're going to see if she's interested she's definitely interested in the job job but since, since that, that discussion with the virus coming in, the, the girls finished, finished the discussions, discussions are even bit harder. Yep. No, so, right. um, so, um, but, but obviously, we're going to need to resolve that from this year. Yep, definitely. Uh, next season, next season. Danny John asked a question that usually comes up every time we have a discussion. Uh, any plans to bring back a gold jersey, uh, or even as a sec- uh, preferably as the primary jersey, but even as a second or third strip? There's some of the, the, the designs on the fence, but the, the designs did have a gold jersey on it. It wasn't for the main one, it was, oh, it was for one of them. It was gold and blue, there were gold and blue, there were stripes and there were pin stripes involved. It was quite fashionable as well. So, yes, there definitely. And for the ones out there, the green, white, and cinnamon, some of the stuff is even a bit better. There's more white with green and cinnamon touches of it, so. Yeah, yeah, so, so the, the new pets, they, they, they could, could, could be a nice little, little change. change. Awesome, excellent. But the big, but the big, the big, big thing, thing is getting the gold right. right. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's there's another some of the comments here. You're, you're right, right. It, it has to be that goal. The, the grand final shot, it has to be that goal. Yeah, it doesn't work in any way. Because you look at the Wanderers, the Wanderers are a good shot. And again, it looks average because it's too dark. Definitely. We sort of talked about the short-term uh, contract players that came in, but uh, Greg, uh, Craig Papworth asked, "Was it, is there any chance Bernie Abini's going to be offered a contract next season?" Yeah, yeah well, yeah, again, yeah, he's yeah, Bernie's yeah, command. He, he loved, loved it as well. well. Um, Carol, Carol coached, coached them before. Coached I coached them before. Coached them before. He's, he's, he's very, very happy. happy. Well, he's always, still got aspirations of going overseas, but he needs to just play football. And, and Bernie, 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 Bernie is keen to stay at the club. The club. Obviously, Obviously, once, once we, we know what's happening, we'll definitely have to speak to him. I speak to him. I speak to Joe Edley. And as we'll be speaking to him, so on. Yep, definitely. Awesome. Uh, okay, so we can't really ask that. That's more of a Fox question. Can't really do much about that. Uh, we've answered the question whether Carl went home, Aiden. Uh, yes, he has. We sort of covered off on Bobby Burns. There's pretty much no... Um, Sheridan asked a question about, will we see Bobby Burns back? It, it doesn't look very likely he's going to try and push his push his chances he's over. Contract. Yeah, he's he's contracted contract and he, in, in my opinion, opinion, he has to, um, he has to try and... This is him. He's, he's going to make, make a break there. there. And if, if it doesn't, doesn't quite work out, out he can always come back next season. He can always come back next season. He's made a name for himself. Everybody likes him. He's got a good left peg. He's good, he's, he's good, good on the ball, ball comfortable on the, on the ball. ball. You know, he's, he's, he's a decent, decent wee player, and and he loved his time at Newcastle, and um, I think it's, it's been really good for him because he was so frustrated at the beginning because he was just working his ass off to try and get a game, and he just could not get a game. Yeah, wasn't cracking in. Uh, Jared Baldwin asked the question about opening the gates free of charge. We've answered to that. Uh, Andy Lane asked a question uh, tied into your. Tied into your Netflix. Uh, when are we going to see Newcastle Till I Die hit Netflix? Well, I, I don't know if you can remember. The Marlers done one quite a few years ago. Um, it was no, after. No, I was no, the mayor at the time. No, no one saw it. Yeah, it was called the code. Uh, I got Chrissy just showed her through the code. <laughs> and it was actually, it was pretty good. It was very similar to um, Sunderland Till I Die. Slightly different format. But that guy did approach me to do it for Newcastle. And, and I think it might have been the year of the grand final. final. Oh, right. But it was, it was purely a financial thing because obviously you have to pay for all the production and, and the costs of doing it all, so it's quite expensive. But um, I think it would actually be quite entertaining because when, when you've got the cameras going about, once everybody's relaxed with it, you don't even know the cameras are there. Yeah. 
And um, I think it was, it would actually be there'd be some good banter in there. It'd be it'd be worth looking into. It'd be be interesting, so long as it's not like being Liverpool. So. Uh, Hayden Faust asked, he remembered talks happening a while ago about not pumping music over the speakers before kickoff. Um, what's your take on it as a club? Can you decide not to have it? Or does the FFA force it sort of league-wide? No, 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 no. So it's just like never tears us apart before the game and stuff no, no, no. like that. No, no, no. I think it's just general, general music in the lead-up to before the players come out. Ah, if you go to any ground overseas, every ground's got music before the game. Mm. Every, everywhere you go there'll be music and then just, just before kick off you'll get the club song or you'll get what never tears apart the Rangers they play simply the best um, they, they play just before simply the best comes on um, they, they play um, they, they have another song comes on that all the fans sing they never, they have Penny Arcade comes on so it's all all, all over the, the world, world they, they all play music. It's to get, try and get the atmosphere of the ground up. But obviously, if you get eight or nine thousand, thirty thousand seat stadium, it's, it's pretty hard. Yep. Um, but I would still say it would, it would stay there. Um, I think it's more of along the lines of if the music's playing too loud over the speakers, you, you're sort of drowning out any supporters being able to get any atmosphere right, right. going. I think that's and probably I think where it's, it's they've had some issues in the past with actually the volume. Yep. On because we've had. The grandstand in the west, yeah, everybody can hear it fine, but they can't hear it on the other side. So then they turn the volume up and it's blasting on one side, so the other side is getting that balance right as well. And I think the stadium have done a bit of work to the PA system. Ah, good. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Stanmore asked, uh, there was few rumours about a logo slash badge change last season. Was that ever discussed or seriously considered about adjusting or changing the changing the crest or badge? And the, the only talk was because the Air Force had the F-35 jets, the new, I think it's, is it F-35, um, the, new, the new jet. Oh, the, the Joint Strike Force jet. Yeah, the new one, yeah, they've got the latest one. That's, um, it was just actually changing the, the slight design of the jet to the new jet, that was all. So yep. it was actually just doing the update because... No, the the, the, the RAV base has got these, the latest jets. So I think the Hornets and that are on their way out. And I think the badge had the Hornets on the badge. So that was, there were discussions about that early doors, but nothing came of it. Uh, David Clark asked, not sure if this is still going, but is or was there a RAF round kit in the works for this season? Um, no. So, the, so what happened, because we couldn't walk in the RAF round, until maybe two months out, um, we got the, we got a special design as well, and which actually had the RAF logo on it, and it looked outstanding, and it's real memorabilia piece because it's actually got the RAF logo on it. We couldn't guarantee we'd have it delivered for the game, so we just said no, it can't. We can't risk the stock coming in after the game's been played. Yeah. So we, we made the decision to pull the pin on it and use it for next year. We'll use that for next RAF round. So the, the RAF work, we got the jets all approved, everything was done, it just took a long while to go. We started working on this like last August, September, and we got it approved finally probably about February. So there were a lot of work went into it, and to be fair, this time the RAF were going to have everything. They were going to have trucks, everything out the front. It would have been a really good day, um, but then obviously this stuff's happened. <laughs> it got stuffed up. Yep. So no, so no shots, but they were a design that was all approved, and that will be used for next year because it's the hundredth anniversary next year as well. Awesome. Uh, da, 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 Andy Wright chucked a couple of questions up. First one was, he's enjoyed watching the youth team in the MPL. Can you give us some more insight on moving from Northern to the uh, New South Wales MPL competition system yep. and what it's, yep. done for the, what it's done for the youth team? Well, it's actually it's very frustrating because the, the girls play in the, the Sydney comp um, and handle themselves very well. Our 13s, 14s, 15s will go into NPL, went into NPL too, and can handle that. Can are doing very well. The few games they did play, the seniors, the 16s, 
17s and 16, 18s and the 20s had to go into NPL 4. So that politically, it's just, just all politics, you know. We should be in at least two, um, but we've had to take a back, go down to the bottom and then have to work our way back up. So we've probably taken a hit for a couple of years. We won the first game and I think we lost the second game by goal. And it's not going to be an easy thing because you're playing against men and players are getting paid reasonable money. But to get up and to get our standard better, we have to have the boys and girls playing against better players. And that's the reason why we we, man, we got out of Northern New South Wales to get in the New South Wales comps. So then we'll be competing against Sydney, Western Sydney and the Marmers as well. All right. Uh, Favourite and most intimidating grounds you've visited as a player, supporter and coach? I think in Australia, one of the most intimidating ones is Adelaide um, as a coach because you're down there if you're playing in, when it's a big game with 14 to 16,000 they're right on top of you and I've had a I've had a few words with a few supporters down there over my time and um, so because of the, the the tightness of the stadium it's, it's quite intimidating you always feel as though you're under the pump so not scary but intimidating and as a player as a player well I played it Ibrox and I played at Celtic Park and, and stuff like that, but not to huge crowds. Um, I'm trying to think of a, as a player. Like when I used to, when I played with Heidelberg and you had the Greek Derby or, or Lambert Park, when I used to play at Appia against McCauley when you had 8,000 people and at Lambert Park, when you're going to take a throw in and it feels that tight, somebody takes the ball out of your hands as you put it over <laughs> your head. Um, you know, that was all quite intimidating when you played Sydney Olympic in the old days in the old National League. You know, that was quite intimidating as well. Um, but I think Adelaide, like coming, when I used to come up here with the Mariners, when you'd like those semi finals and you have over 20,000 people, and then you had like 18, 19,000 people at the Central Coast, you know, the atmosphere of those games was electric because it's Derby games and that game where we hung on. Um, Try to think what when I think Rocket was in goals and every you were pumping us. Was that the one that Thomas scored and then F scored near the end and we went through? Was that year one? And you know it was we were just under the pump and you were, the the Jets fans were there were a great contingent down there and it was just mayhem. You know it was um, some great nights. And I think some of those derby games with the Mariners and the Jets in the early years were just outstanding as a, as a spectacle. Yeah, yeah, you know, definitely. It uh, doesn't matter who you followed, but you come there. But even now, when, even though crowds have not been great over the last couple of years, but even though you're going down there with two and a half to three thousand fans, mm. you know, and the atmosphere is great on those nights and that marks to the ground. And, you know, that's different class. Yeah, you, know, you, you get people coming through overseas and they don't travel with two or three thousand people. Yeah, well, it'd be you nice. Know, so. It'd be nice if the uh, the other team would be able to reciprocate that. But well, you know, it's, well, well it's, I can it's, remember it's, quite it's a few years ago. I chucked the because in those days we did come up with a lot. Mm. But then I chucked out the comment in the press was, um, yeah, it'd be good to have a derby game, but you have to come down and coach. There's no many buses. And then that weekend, I remember I was up at. Westfields at Tugra and at the Fruit for All sponsor and I had a cup of coffee with the boys and all these Jets fans were everywhere and I'm going where are they going you know it's too early for the game and this guy walked past hey McKenna is there enough of us now because they were everywhere you know and because I chucked that that was the biggest support the Jets and because I chucked out that little the little hook, you know, you have to support your team in a derby game. And yeah. for that day onwards, the Jets fans have came down in numbers. And recent years, since I've been at the club, the numbers have been amazing. You know, three bays down the bottom, three bays up the top and scattered all over the place. And sometimes getting close to outnumbering the, the Mariners fans. Yeah, definitely. The the minibus comment was definitely a, uh, a watershed back then, definitely. <laughs> uh, the home game in Coffs was a success. Any plans for any further non-Newcastle home games? Yeah, last year we looked at um, Tamworth. We tried. We worked very closely with Tamworth, the West Club up there. But the, the big problem we've got, because you're going to a stadium which is... 
it's not a f- all set up for Fox. Yeah. That actual costs about eighty thousand dollars. So by the time you actually start covering expenses, blah blah blah, and then you have to pay money for Fox. It's financially not any worthwhile. If you're going to take a game away, it has to be worthwhile financially for the club. So to take a game away that's not going to be a financial benefit to us, why take a game away for your members? Yeah, definitely. So if we if we could go, we looked at Maitland last year, the low is just up the road. We looked at Maitland, but FFA weren't really happy with the, with the setup. Yeah. Um, and we worked really hard to get that because that's just an hour up the road. Um, the Tamworth, Tamworth one, they were hot to trot, um, great facility, fantastic playing surface. They'd expect a bit between eight and 10,000 people there, but it just the numbers just didn't work. Yeah, okay. Uh, we'll finish off on this one, uh, one of Andy's uh, last questions. Uh, after Ernie left, uh, Deansy changed to a three-five-two, which Carl continued with. W- was that instigated by Carl before his official start date, or do you think Craig should be given a lot more praise for for our changes in fortune? No, no Craig and um, Carl had actually spoke about it on the phone, but Deansy was thinking about it, and um, I think at that time I think we just agreed with Carl, so he was talking to Deansy. Yep. So Deansy was going to go with that, but then that week, um, Carl had spoke and they spoke about it, and Carl had agreed with him. Like Carl never got involved because um, he was like, no, 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 Deansy's running the club. Okay, I'm going to come in as a coach, but Deansy's making his decisions. And um, but they definitely spoke about it. So Deansy was thinking of that with the players we had available, you know, and. Um, and Carl did give him his backing on it as well. Yeah. So Deansy deserves the credit, but Carl was definitely there uh, in agreement with him. Beautiful. All right. Well, Laurie, Saturday night, really appreciate you, and big thanks to Christine for allowing us to uh, take over your lounge room. And, well, and I'll go and I'll go and make a I'll make Christine a cup of tea now. I'll, I'll put I'll put Lenny I'll put Lenny back I'll put Lenny back to bed. Um, he became a Dutch fan a few weeks ago. All oh, right, uh, he, I was wasn't, do, he wasn't. I was still going to do an interview with him up on the table. I was actually going to interview him, and I've just kept the shot on him. <laughs> he when, was, when my grandkids came on Thursday, they they were quite impressed that he, he had the Jets shot on. Well, he wasn't still wearing that Mariners jersey, I hope. No, nah, he's never had a Mariners jersey. They they're well gone. I've got I've actually got a framed one somewhere, but um, it doesn't it doesn't come out and show anymore. That, that's that's probably a good idea. Like Laurie, <laughs> really appreciate really appreciate you being able to uh, give us your time and and answer all of the uh, supporters questions. Big thanks to the well, Newcastle Jets supporters page for uh, partnering with us to to get these questions for for Laurie, and really appreciate your uh, your insight and your, uh, expanding on the 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 questions that the guys asked. Yeah, and maybe I'll oh, see you, Grant offline of that but maybe in a few weeks we maybe have some good stuff to talk about as well so but that'll and then more than happy come on and talk about that as well absolutely fantastic mate really appreciate it um thanks very much for listening guys and watching uh give us a like if you if you liked what we did we do apologize for the uh slight echo that uh that uh, has taken place throughout the broadcast. We'll try and get that ironed out for the next one that we do. Um, this is the first time I've done this, so uh, it's it's a learning curve. Uh, I do apologise if it's if it's stuffed around with anybody's experience, but uh, I, I hope that uh, people haven't uh, found it too distracting and we're able to get um, some some good information out of it. So, thanks very much, guys. Hopefully, this has uh, helped pass a little bit of time on a Saturday night when there's no football going on and. Uh, Laurie, enjoy the rest of your time. Take care of yourself. Uh, uh, to, uh, best wishes to the family, and we will speak to you again soon. Okay. Cheers, everybody. Thank you.